I'm Caleb Murphy, a third year veterinary student at the Texas A&M College of Veterinary Medicine. I am with Pew, a partner in environmental education and rural health. Today in our interview series, Careers in Veterinary Medicine, we will meet Dr. Katie Glass. She is a large animal surgeon and a clinician for equine sports medicine here at the Texas A&M Veterinary Medical Teaching Hospital. I'm Dr. Katie Glass. My field is unique to general practice in that I spend the vast majority of my time focusing on the musculoskeletal system of the horse. It doesn't mean I don't do any general practice because I certainly do, as most veterinarians do in their daily life, some vaccines, general physical exams, and things that you would go every day to your vet for. But most of our time we spend very focused on horses with very specific problems that we're hoping to diagnose and provide treatment options for. I decided to be an equine sports medicine vet and surgeon um, through a few factors. First, I was just one of those horse crazed little girls that grew up absolutely passionate about horses and wanting to spend as much time as I could around them and with them. Because of my love for the horse, I knew that I wanted to work with them. It was after I started working with horses that I realized my interest for the musculoskeletal system and for the equine athlete. And that led to my passion in helping diagnose lameness and work through ways to rehabilitate or treat those patients so that they could go back to their performance jobs. I interact with many different people on a daily basis. So I work with a big team, uh, which makes my job possible. It is consistent of many technicians that help by holding and handling the horses and interacting with owners with me. I also interact because of my job here at Texas A&M with students. So I am almost always with students that are learning about my job. Um, they do that during their fourth year of veterinary school where they're really hands-on and a part of our daily practice. I also obviously engage with horse owners. And so I think my impact on each of those people is very different. I hope that I can give some direction and, and peace and support to the horse owner in efforts to help figure out what's wrong with their horse. I hope that I can work in a very collaborative way with my technicians in a way that achieves our goals to help our clients. And I hope that my students learn things that they would like to incorporate into their practice, skills and knowledge that they need to impact their clients in the future. A normal day for me as a vet is kind of a, a funny question because they never seem quite normal. We do very different things almost on a daily basis, which is part of why I love this job. But a typical day, I would say, begins sometime between 7 and 8 o'clock in the morning when we arrive at the hospital and when I am uh, the clinician assigned to the equine sports medicine and imaging service, I often have a horse that goes right away to MRI. So right at 8 o'clock in the morning, we get our first horse under anesthesia and into the MRI so that we can figure out hopefully what's wrong with them. While that's going on, it takes a few hours, we are seeing outpatients, so horses that come into the hospital for exams and diagnostics and treatments. Um, that's when I'm talking with owners and, and helping to answer their questions. And then throughout the day as well, we often have patients that are in the hospital, either getting ready for or recovering from treatments or surgeries that we also have to take care of. And so as you can see, it can be quite variable um, and there are a lot of moving parts. Horses are going to different parts of the hospital constantly. We may be inside and outside um, very frequently throughout our day, um, but that's part of why I really enjoy this job is that it uh, varies significantly in what we get to do and who we get to see uh, and the types of horses that we get to help. I've been very fortunate in my career so far to have had some very interesting experiences. The, the top of that list, and one I think that will be very difficult to beat for me, was the opportunity to travel to, to Salt Lake City and assist in the surgery of a broken leg on a polar bear named Nora. She is a very well-loved polar bear that broke her leg in a way that uh, 
nobody knows, nobody was able to see it happen. Uh, and a colleague of mine, Dr. Watkins, and I were able to travel there um, because of our experience in orthopedic surgery and repair of this specific type of fracture. And we were able to do surgery on Nora. I'm happy to report that she has healed very well. She's back on exhibit and she's doing great. Veterinarians face several challenges when we think about equine lameness and sports medicine. Of course, the obvious is that our patients can't tell us where they hurt. And so we spend a lot of time utilizing the tools and the techniques that we have to try to sort out where their pain is coming from so that we can figure out what it is that hurts them so that then we can figure out what we should do about it. When you and I have pain or discomfort, we can go to our doctor and say, my elbow hurts or my knee hurts. But because my patient can't do that, I have to put them through certain tests and do certain things to them to see if I can make the pain either more apparent or go away. And so that often requires many hours of our day and a lot of patience on both our part and the part of the horse owner. And as you can tell, there's many steps to that process. So once we sort out where the horse's pain is coming from, we still have a few more steps until we get to the end of the road to hopefully figure out what it is that hurts there so that then we can sort out what to do about it um, and what the prognosis may be. I am fortunate to have a job that I really enjoy. I love my job for several reasons. The first is the reason that I became a veterinarian is to help people that love their animals. I grew up as one of those people that loved and appreciated the role of the animals in my life and the experiences that it allowed me. And I knew that I wanted to spend my career to pay that back to other people who feel the same way. Whether that be the horse that lives at home that you ride for fun or the horse that helps you make your living, I understand the impact that those animals, regardless of species, um, that they have on our lives and, and our livelihood. That was the main reason uh, that I became a veterinarian. As I began that journey, I also realized that I'm very passionate about teaching and helping others fulfill their goals of becoming successful veterinarians to help their clients as well. And so this job allows me to do both of those things in a really unique way, where I can work at this amazing institution, help clients and help students, um, and that's what keeps me going. As a young child, I thought that I wanted to become a veterinarian, likely well before I understood what that actually meant. And so I spent a few years trying to sort out what that looked like. I spent years working, I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana. I spent several years in high school working at a practice at the local racetrack, working with thoroughbred racehorses. And that was the first time that I actually um, became involved in the treatment of horses that were athletic, predominantly, and that were the main source of income for those people that are involved in their care and their use. And it was during that time that I realized how passionate I was about the athletic performance horse, about the musculoskeletal system, and the amazing things that these horses could do. From there, I, I knew for sure that vet school was my way to go, and so that just emboldened me on my, on my goals toward, towards pursuing that. Once I got into undergraduate, um, my undergraduate studies, I began to broaden my experience a bit and, and had some research experience um, that helped me to really understand how we come to learn and know what we know. Um, so my background was my personal, um, really fun times that I had with my horses growing up at home, uh, riding Western, 4-H, and kind of an all-around horse experience. Moving into a more professional horse experience with the thoroughbred racehorses um, before pursuing my final goal for vet school. So to become board certified in any subspecialty requires additional training after vet school. So the path to vet school for most people looks like an undergraduate degree followed by four years of veterinary school training. Thereafter, you're a veterinarian and you can go do your job. But for those of us who wanted to pursue additional training or subspecialty, it meant that we, for the vast majority, myself included, pursued an internship first. So I moved to 
Ocala, Florida, and I, pr I completed a one-year rotating internship that gave me a very well-rounded experience in equine practice, so all parts of equine practice. After that, I matched to come actually back here to Texas A&M for a surgery residency. The surgery residency was three years of training after that, um, and then during the final year thereafter, um, a, a big test, <laughs> a, a board certification exam, after which you become board certified. I am board certified in large animal surgery. I spend most of my time when I am not on the equine sports medicine and imaging service on equine or horse surgery services. However, there are many subspecialties and there are some that work well together like surgery and sports medicine and there are others that have very different interest, um, all of which you should investigate and figure out which one is the most um, impactful for you. Horses love to injure themselves in all kinds of ways. <laughs> the most common injuries that we treat are typically associated with bone and joint or soft tissues. So very similar to human athletic patients or, or even uh, us that, that aren't athletic, we can encounter osteoarthritis, that being one very common thing that we also treat in horses, and soft tissue injuries, things like tendonitis um, and other injuries related to the use of your limbs and your joints. Being in Texas, we, you would think that we only see kind of the old western cow horse types of horses, and that's certainly not completely untrue, but we see a very broad range of horses. We see a lot of rodeo stock, ranch horse type of quarter horses that are used for western type of work. However, we also have an ever-growing uh, population of patients that are used for English disciplines, things like dressage, jumping, and eventing. So I would say that we see very few race horses in Texas. That's something I'm a, I'm a bit sad about, but we see a, a large number of both Western and English performance horses. So there are many resources to figure out information about equine sports medicine and other specialties, but I think the best place to go, particularly when you're first starting to uh, dive into this amazing world of, of veterinary medicine, is the AVMA website, the American Veterinary Medical Association. You can go to avma.org and you can actually find there is a page there. If you type in AVMA specialties, it's the first search that will come up. Um, that will show you all the specialties that there are within practice of veterinary medicine, both large animal, small animal, and support services, things like pathology, um, and, and, and laboratory medicine and things that you may not think about when you think about traditional veterinary practice. For a young person that was interested in equine practice, um, particularly sports medicine or surgery related, I would say to get involved. Get involved early. Uh, find a practice that's near you where you can shadow or work as a student technician that you can see what that day-to-day -day life looks like. It's a challenging job. It is one that requires much experience, and so the sooner the better to, to get started on that um, journey. But I would say that even if you're not a horse person and you're interested, you don't have that background, um, that you should not count yourself out, that there are still opportunities for you in this field. And for those that have motivation and initiative, there's a place for you here. So if you think that you might be interested in this, I would say reach out to somewhere local where you can get involved in, in equine veterinary medicine. And if you're struggling to find somewhere where you can specifically work in vet medicine with horses, get in a field where you see horses, where you know what they do, where you see what type of athletic performance that they are asked to do in their daily jobs. And that information and knowledge will help you as you translate that to what happens to them when they become injured or when we think about treating them as a veterinarian. If you have a passion for veterinary medicine, that you should absolutely seek that, that you should find ways to gain that experience and to contemplate moving down that road. You're going to hear a lot of times along the way that it's hard, and that's true. You're going to hear that the vast majority of students really struggle at some point, and that's also true. 
but there are so many people who want to help you to be successful and so that you can reach your goals to work in this field in whatever way that may look like. And so I would just say to begin building your network, to find ways to become involved and to think about um, what that path may look like for you because we need you. We need you in equine practice. We need you in large animal surgery. We need you in large animal um, veterinary care. And so if you're thinking about this as a, as a job in the future, I'd encourage you to just keep at it and, and let us help you along the way. We hope you enjoyed our visit with Dr. Katie Glass. To learn more about veterinary medicine, please visit our website at vetmed.tamu.edu slash peer. Thank you and have a good day.